So I want to pick your brain a little bit on uh, more of the the tinfoil hat stuff, silver confiscation. Now, I want to start by mentioning that it actually has happened before. A lot of people don't know this. Most people know about the Executive Order 6102 by FDR in um, you know, 1933, uh, stating um, that everyone should turn in their gold or pay a $10,000 fine or 10 years imprisonment or both. Um, but actually, the following year, there was Executive Order 6814, which was the same exact thing, but with silver, stating, give us all your silver, pay a $10,000 fine, 10 years imprisonment, or both. Most people don't know about the silver one because the, uh, the first executive order uh, was so popular. So do you think that silver confiscation in today's world is realistic and why? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. And um, look, uh, you know, one thing I want to go back on is after the government confiscated as much as it could, you know, some of it just was people are going to take the risk of the fine. Right. Yeah. But for those law abiding citizens who did turn in their gold, sadly, um, it was revalued at twice the price instantaneously, which yeah. is so, which is so sad um, because they were, they were given half of that value when they turned in their gold. And, you know, look, the way I look at this issue is similar to the way I look at how do we, how do we solve the problems that we we have today? And and I think there's going to be multiple ways that we do that. And you know, and and basically, you know, through higher taxes, through inflation, is how we are going to pay back all these debts. And so, when it comes to confiscation of silver, I think it's possible. But at, if the end goal is for the government to get their hands on the silver. I think there's two ways to go about it. There's, you know, you either attack the industry, right? Uh, or you attack the public that owns it. And I think what's working in the favor of the government is there isn't enough uh, individual ownership. Um, you know, if you look at the percentage uh, allocated to precious metals globally by the average uh, person, it's, um, it's not what it used to be. You know, you know, you used to be you used to be, uh, you know, two percent of wealth was concentrated into precious metals. You know, it's it's a fraction of a percentage today. So I actually don't know how effective confiscation would be. Um, but, you know, look, I, I was told when I first got into this business 20 years ago that you need to go out and take any excess earnings that you have and accumulate this stuff. Because there is going to come a time, whether it's government or it's industry. I was told it's going to be industry. Industry is going to be knocking on those on their doors, looking for those kilo bars, looking for those you know hundred ounce. I don't have any thousand ounce because you know I don't know if I can lift them, but um, <laughs> but uh, I have enough trouble with a hundred ounce bars. But um, no, I've been so I've been stacking silver for a long time. I think I started silver in 08. Were you uh, wanting to sell when it hit 50 three years later? That's great so profits I, right there. I went down to a conference called Freedom Fest in uh, in Las Vegas in 2008, and it was the first time I ever saw Rick Rule. And I was just, you know, I was, uh, you know, I was, I was going to say I was a kid, um, you know, maybe 25, 26 years old, something like that. And so I go down to this conference and I had a $20 Canadian bill and I exchanged that $20 bill for an ounce of silver. And I actually, when I, when I got back home, um, I had my mom take a picture of me with this, with an ounce of silver and a $20 bill. And I said to her, uh, with a lot of conviction, I said, you know, I, I want to record this and I want to, you know, one day show my kids, you know, so they understand, you know, what I was able to do here. And, you know, had I been a little bit younger, you know, um, and, and on this a little bit earlier, it would have been a $5 bill and an ounce of silver. Right. I remember when hearing about Warren Buffett coming into the silver market, it was sub $5 an ounce. But um but, uh, you know, look, I, I just think that, um, you know, it's one of these things where it's taken a lot of time, a lot of patience, um, you know, a lot of investors wouldn't be prepared to be as patient as that. Like, you know, I think that, you know, what I'm looking for here 
you know, what I was told is, you know, you only have to get rich once. You only have to be right in a big way once. And you'll probably feel wrong before you are right. So what I actually did is I started getting greedy and I turned in, I had accumulated, uh, you know, about six figures of physical metal um, by around 2010. And I emptied out my safe and I turned that uh, six figures of metal and I put it all into one silver mining stock. Whoa. And that's and that silver mining stock in four months went up eight hundred percent. Wow. And the warrants that were associated with the investment went up another four hundred percent. So it was a you know I turned something like uh, you know a hundred grand into one point two million dollars. Wow. And um, and and I sold and I took my money off the table and I I patiently waited. to get back into the gold market. Uh, I got back into gold in 2014 and I invested in a company that had previously during the run in 2009, 10 and 11 had gone up to about a $40 million valuation. And this company had landed on my desk. It was called Bonterra Resources and it was trading at, so it was at a $40 million valuation around 2010. I started investing in at a $500,000 valuation with the thinking that if it can get back to half of its old high, it should be a pretty good investment. You know, 500. Which it always will, right? Well, you know where it went? Within 18 months, it went to a hundred million dollar valuation. It Right. didn't go to half its value. It went to two and a half times. Right. It And it so, always yeah. and so after that, I said to myself in around 2018, I think it's time to get it back into silver. That was six years ago. And so I did get out of silver in and around uh, 2011, uh, the spring of 2011 on that run to 50. Um, and I started getting back into silver in 2018. And I uh, came and that's when I found Dolly Varden. You know, I found Dolly Varden in 2019 and took over as CEO in February 2020. The stock was 20 cents. It's north of a dollar today. So already it's gone up 5x. And I don't think this bull market's even begun. But, um, you know, I'm out there looking all over the world for silver investing opportunities and ideas. And, you know, sadly, in four and a half years since I took over Dolly, I've only come across two assets Um, that have where I, th I think we could, you know, you could really get true primary exposure to the metal and where I see the games, uh, you know, 10x, 20x opportunities.